And so when I tell people that one of my favorite fat burning strategies is to literally not eat for four to six hours after this type of exercise, people look at me like a deer in headlights, like I'm crazy because I'm not taking advantage of that so-called post-workout magic window. Hey everybody, Coach Sean the Rip Grandpa, and should you exercise while fasting? That's the question I'm gonna answer inside this video, and before we get started, I wanna share everything that I'm gonna teach you here are the exact same strategies I recently just used that took my body fat at 50 years old from 15% all the way down to 5.8%. You can see here on the screen, I documented my journey. It took me a little over 10 weeks, and the results were so dramatic that people actually accused me of photoshopping my pictures and using drugs. Two of the greatest compliments I could ever receive, so I don't share this with you to impress you, just to impress upon you, this stuff does work. Now, with that being said, we have to look at a lot of variables here. Number one being the research. What does it say about fasted versus fed exercise? And honestly, I could dig up a ton of studies on both sides that support both camps. That's why it's important that we have to look at what are your goals. So everything inside this video is gonna be based on body recomposition, gaining or maintaining lean muscle tissue, while while burning fat at the same time. When I followed the strategies inside this video for a little over 10 weeks, I was about four pounds heavier at 6% body fat than I normally am, which is an indication I actually gained and or prevented myself from burning up muscle the leaner I got. So very beneficial. So also, if your goal is just to gain muscle or performance, I would consider not even trying fasted exercise because the goal is not fat loss. You need to feed your muscles. When your goal is to gain muscle, or it's performance or strength, you're gonna need to eat before exercise, and then also what's your tolerance? Can you tolerate fasted exercise? If you can't, maybe it's not for you, or you just need to ease your way into it. Try walking first, then a little jogging, and then experiment with higher intensity strength training after your body gets used to it, and then also the duration can make a huge difference of whether you should eat before and after exercise. I mean, if you're going a marathon runner, and you're running for 10 miles, you should not be doing that in a fasted state. You're gonna tap into muscle tissue and burn it up. So we'll dive in, we'll talk about duration based on resistance training, HIT, high intensity interval training, or less low intensity steady state cardio. All right, so let's dive in because when you exercise in a fasted state, it affects one very, very important word and that word is hormones. So up here on the board, you're gonna see a list of hormones along with the effect on those hormones will have on your body based on whether or not you're in a fasted state or a fed state. And the first hormone that we wanna talk about is insulin because anytime you eat food, even if it's a low carb, healthy meal, you're going to raise insulin levels. In the presence of higher insulin levels, it's impossible for your body to access stored fat cells as a fuel source and insulin is also the antagonist of certain fat burning hormones like growth hormone and other hormones called catecholamines. And these hormones are adrenaline and norepinephrine. When you're in a fasted state and you exercise at a higher intensity because insulin is very, very low, growth hormone and catecholamines are very, very high. Now these are the hormones that are responsible for releasing fatty acids from your fat cells into the bloodstream where they can be delivered to working tissue like heart, liver, and muscle tissue and burned as a fuel source. So this is how you literally can shrink a stubborn fat cell. Now when you're in a fed state, even if it's a healthy choice, because insulin is elevated, growth hormone and catecholamines are very, very low. Now also, insulin, because it's an antagonist of these hormones, when it's very, very low, it also increases glucagon, which is known as your blood sugar hormone. So when glucagon is elevated, it's been shown to increase fat burning, and when you're in a fed state, glucagon is very, very low because insulin is elevated. What does these hormones affect have on the body? Well, as I just discussed, because when you're in a fasted state, your body's sympathetic nervous system or your fight or flight response kicks up really high. And this is what coaxes your adrenal glands to release these hormones that we just talked about and also helps coax the pituitary to release growth hormone. All of these things are going to help you increase fat burning. Now, with that being said, because you're in a fasted state, muscle building is gonna be a lot lower, performance is gonna be lower, energy could potentially be lower, and strength 
could actually be lower. So these are some of the cons of exercising in a fasted state. And if you're in a fed state, you'll notice all these arrows are up. So if the goal is to build muscle, to improve performance, to increase energy, and to have more strength, fasted training probably is not the best choice. However, if the goal is to burn stubborn fat, fasted exercise, especially at a high intensity, is one of the best choices you can make if you're in your 40s, 50s, or 60s. Okay, so now that you understand the hormonal effect that fasted versus fed training has on your body, let's get tactical and teach you exactly how to apply this. And I'll share the exact techniques I use to transform my body over the past couple months. And if you want more details on an exact diet plan to follow and an exact exercise plan to follow to get the results that you saw in my transformation, I put a link to our over 40 hormone reset diet in the description below. This is gonna give you a comprehensive blueprint with the exact timing, portion control, and combinations of foods that you need to eat in conjunction with the techniques that I'm teaching you inside this video. So up here, you're gonna see a column for weight training and resistance training, and you're gonna see a column for HIT or LIS. So high intensity interval training or low intensity steady state cardio. Personally, before a weight training session, because the goal should be to gain or at least maintain lean muscle tissue while dieting. I like to eat before a weight training session. Now, I don't like food in my stomach because I burp it up. So about an hour to an hour and a half before my weight training session, I have a piece of fruit and a protein shake because I'm gonna absorb that protein shake much faster and digest it much quicker into my muscle tissue than I am a piece of meat that's gonna sit in my stomach for hours. The same thing with the fruit. It's a fast acting sugar that I know I'm gonna use as energy during the workout. This is kind of like an insurance policy, which is very similar to amino acids. If you're in the middle of an intermittent fast, for example, and you want to strength train, having 10 grams of amino acids before and afterwards will still allow you to get all the fat burning benefits of the fast, but the amino acids are like eating protein without the calories. So they're like an insurance policy that guarantees that you won't tap into precious muscle tissue during your workout. Now, with that being said, amino acids are slightly insulinogenic, so they will raise insulin slightly for a short amount of time. Now, this is desirable during a weight training workout because insulin, of course, is very anabolic and muscle sparing. You'll still get all the benefits of the fast while making sure that you protect your precious lean muscle tissue. Now, if you're doing high intensity interval training, or a low intensity steady state cardio session, I recommend you fast before that, every time you exercise. So either four hours after a meal when insulin is stabilized after your last meal, either in the morning when you wake up on an empty stomach, or in the middle of an intermittent fast. So if the duration of your session is greater than 45 minutes, and you're in the middle of an intermittent fast, make sure you have 10 grams of amino acids afterwards. Remember, we don't want to have it before these cardio sessions because your body's sympathetic nervous system is elevated and all those fat burning hormones I talked about, the adrenaline and the growth hormone are elevated. And if you have amino acids before the cardio and you raise insulin, now you're blocking these hormones and completely defeating the purpose of that particular workout. However, with that being said, if it's over 45 minutes and you fast afterwards, you could potentially start tapping into muscle tissue because of the duration of that workout was so long, your body's tapping into all the stored glycogen. It could potentially use muscle as a fuel source. So in the post-workout window, have 10 grams of amino acids if you're in the middle of an intermittent fast. And then if it's under 45 minutes, I just skip it. And this is why people think that I'm crazy sometimes because I tell them I literally fast for four to six hours after I do a high intensity interval training session or a low intensity steady state cardio session that's under 45 minutes. Because what ends up happening is in that post-workout window, because you've elevated growth hormone and adrenaline and all those catecholamines, you're releasing the hormones that are actually going to preserve muscle tissue and prevent you from losing that muscle. And as I said, these fight or flight hormones are the exact hormones that actually release and burn stored fat cells. If you wanna get a comprehensive plan, a blueprint on exactly how all this works, click the Hormone Reset Diet link in our description. And then next up, Pay close attention to the next video because it's three of the most common mistakes that I see people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s make. Every single time without fail, whoever is trying to lose stubborn fat, if they're over 40 years old and they hit a plateau, they're making one of these three mistakes. I put a lot of work, time, and energy into that video, so check it out. And time is our most precious commodity. Always grateful when people take time to watch my videos. So thanks for watching and keep going strong.